Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining if you are coming back. And if you're new here, make sure you like, comment and subscribe and get stuck in below. So today's video is looking at the kind of sweetest, most sugary, knock your socks off perfumes in my collection and what I would recommend to you guys. I had considered doing a Valentine's Day themed video because I've seen a lot of them going round. If I'm honest with you, I don't really acknowledge Valentine's Day. I'm in a relationship, you know, it's it's not a I'm alone thing. Not that it would be an issue if I was, but I just don't, we just don't really bother with it. So I thought it'd be a little bit insincere for me to then recommend to you guys what you should wear on your Valentine's Day, you know, celebrations, because I don't know. I just don't know. But I see a theme in the videos that we're typically looking at kind of sweet, sugary fragrances. And I thought that it might be a good cue for me to break down the best in my collection. So I'm going to start with one that is very new to the collection. In fact, I've just picked it up in my birthday haul. And this is Scandal by Night by Jean-Paul Gaultier. Now, this is sweet because it's honey and cherry and it is loud. Let me tell you, this is strong. I mean... You can smell it so strongly through the atomizer, even without having sprayed it. I won't spray it on my skin because I've got other perfume on at the moment and this would clash, but this, it has a slight, and this might be because of my nose due to COVID. You know, I've told you guys the story before. This has a slight um, cherry, almost cough syrupy vibe, but it's not like medicinal and ugh. You know, I'm not saying that like, oh, it smells like cough syrup, ergo, I don't like it. It's just, it's got a vibe to it that I can't escape that I don't think I dislike it, but it's just noticeable. One thing I would say is this is so sweet that it would give me a headache. Like I, I don't, I'm having to wait with her because I've only had her a few days and I've just reviewed her in the birthday haul. I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep her because she gives me a headache and I don't know if that's going to be a long-term thing or if it's just a recovery from COVID thing. But I urge you to try it. If you can go into the shop where you live, try it. If you can get a sample, if not, give it a go. If you like a sugary sweet, particularly if you're a big fan of the original Scandal, I think you'd like this. It's cherry, it's honey, it's certainly going to get people's attention. And it is that kind of, I was going to say like a flirty fragrance, but what is a flirty fragrance? It's all a bit silly, isn't it really? Descriptions like, what's a flirty fragrance? It's whatever you wear when you're flirting. But you know what I mean, it's that kind of youthful, sweet, very crowd-pleasing, attention-getting fragrance, not unlike the Le Vier Belle range, the Flower Bomb range, and you'll see the theme in the video. So I urge you to try it. I wouldn't blind buy it because, like I said, it gives me a headache, so I wouldn't want to recommend you blind buy it just in case. But definitely give it a go. Uh, you can pick up this on um, resale websites like Depop and eBay for pretty good prices. I got mine secondhand, unused, uh, for far, far lower than Jean-Paul Gaultier is selling at retail. So check that out. The next fragrance is one that is a lot softer than the Scandal by Night. Not in terms of projection necessarily. I mean, it is softer in projection, but it's not a weak fragrance. It's just not as kind of arresting there's there's something about scandal by night that's slightly an assault on the senses not necessarily in a super super negative way but it's just you've got to want the attention to wear that like you can't wear that and then be a wallflower whereas with this which is love don't be shy by killian it's a soft sweet marshmallow and orange blossom fragrance that is kind of it in a in an in an essence it's orange blossom and marshmallow. It's very feminine leaning. It's like, it gives me a fluffy cloud feeling. You know, I, f I feel like it doesn't project really far away from me, but it does just kind of create this little aura around me that smells nice. You know, that you want, like someone would have to come in close to you to smell it, which, you know, I know this isn't a Valentine's Day video, but we're in the kind of Valentine's Day time. Uh, that may well be something that's on the cards for you. I don't know. I don't know your business, but this is really, really pretty and it's a pretty penny and I'm not recommending you guys blind by it. Certainly not. And I'm not necessarily you guys recommending to you guys that you buy a full bottle of it either. But if you're looking for something in the arsenal that is like pretty, slightly cloudy, super feminine leaning, 
Love Don't Be Shy by Killian is certainly, that ticks all of the boxes. Next up is Flower Bomb Nectar by Victor and Rolf. This is essentially the original Flower Bomb, but with more vanilla and a gunpowder accord, which kind of just creates a little bit of a sharpness at the start, but it's not an acrid smell at all. It's really pretty. I think it's a far more wearable version of the original Flower Bomb, particularly if you are more of a gourmand lover. I'd say sack Flower Bomb off and get the nectar. I've just realised a similarity here that I'll point out in that I think if you added a honey note to Flower Bomb Nectar, it would smell like Scandal by night. They're not identical, but they're just similar. They're very similar. I'd say if you like Flower Bomb Nectar, you'd like Scandal by night, vice versa. Let me know in the comments if I'm right or if you have very strong feelings toward them both on opposite sides of the spectrum, but I'd say that they are both a similar level of super loud, super sweet fragrances that like you're committing to getting attention wearing these because like everyone is going to be able to smell you. Next up is another new one to my collection and that is Lancome La Vie Belle L'Absolu. This is a La Vie Belle flanker that has a great bottle, may I add. Just great like metallic, heavy cap, really sturdy like thick base. She's... She's not going anywhere. You could knock her off. She's not going anywhere. But this is the original La Vie Belle DNA with a praline accord. It's a, basically like an elixir version of the original. It's even more potent. It's slightly more powdery. It definitely has the iris in there. It has a touch of black currant and it has, like I said, the praline accord in the dry down. It is really really nice i'd say if you have the original olivier bell and you love it and you see no reason to change you don't need this particularly seeing as it's uh being discontinued but you can get it on resellers like i did i wouldn't kind of push anyone who has olivier bell and like doesn't see a need to change to get this because it's not wildly different it's just a more intense version with slightly more gourmand notes it's is it less sweet than the original it won't, it's not less sweet than the original, but that powderiness kind of tones down the like slap in the face sweetness because I used to wear the original for years. So I know it really, really well, but it is like, I'm not knocking it because I really like it as a fragrance, but it's slightly screechy at times. Like La Vie Belle is like a girl going around shouting at everyone like, look at me. If she was a fragrance, that's her. Whereas I feel like Lapsalu is slightly more refined and she's going to get attention, but she's not screaming at everyone to get it. She's a little bit more like, yeah, yeah, you're going to give me attention. I'm just living my life here. If I was going to personify those two fragrances, they would be the personalities. Now, the final fragrance is also Olivier Belflanca and that is Le Clat. Now, if Le Clat was a person, I don't know why I'm going down this line of thinking now, but we're going to do it. If Le Clat was a person she'd be far more quiet and she's just that kind of sweet unassuming girl next door person she's not going out trying to get everyone's attention she doesn't really care like super pretty you know like she's still really really like kind of it's just it's just a nice smell it's a pretty smell but again it smells it's in the same vein as uh, love don't be shine that it's a sugary uh orange blossom this has marshmallow this doesn't but this to me is not, it's not really a Olivier Bell DNA. When I think about it, when basically the original Olivier Bell and Olivier Bell Absolu are unmistakably related. Olivier Bell Le Clair, it's far lighter, it's far fresher, more summer and spring. I love it. As you can see, I've got a pretty hefty dent in it there. It is just really fresh, really pretty. You can wear it all year round, but I'd recommend it mainly for spring and summer. But I'd say if you wore this in the winter for your like sweet fragrance and this in the summer, you wouldn't need anything else. Like they are, in terms of sweet fragrances, you're not going to get much sweeter than these. Thank you for watching the video. I appreciate it. I hope you liked the selections and it gave you a little bit of food for thought into some sweet fragrances that you could go out and get yourself if you're on the market for that. And uh, yeah, let me know what yours are. Maybe you have some that absolutely not every other sweet fragrance out the park that I haven't even tried yet. Let me know. Are there any fragrances that you've smelled that are like so sweet they give you a headache or you just thought absolutely not, that's too much. I'm interested because I'm kind of going in that 
territory with Scandal by Night. I don't know how I feel about it. I think she might just be a little bit too sweet for me and she's giving me a headache. Anyway, I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.